Now, when we talk about smart cities, transportation, uh, in integrated rapid transit, this is what we think. The London Underground, uh, swishing lights, connected sensors, the Internet of Things, uh, having everything on your phone. Uh, and yes, if you're living in Europe or America, well, please enjoy it for us. The reality is that in the emerging world, this is what transport looks like. It's bustling, it's very busy, it's packed, overcrowded, never on time, uh, chaotic. If you were to go into that road in, in Accra, you wouldn't know where to begin. Trying to get across town is really, really difficult. Uh, bus systems that do run, that don't financially collapse, are old, dangerous, clunky, and not aspirational. So this is the African smart city for, for transport. The reality is that transport influences our lives, with uh, many people here, right here in Balbo, losing their jobs when trains are late. On the metro, we built an email to boss button, which sends an email to your boss either on the mobile app or on USSD, so that your boss gets alerted to that. Um, and it was, yeah, it was quite a successful little uh, feature. We built it in a few days, and we've sent more than 20,000 know, emails. So let's understand Balbo for a second. Balbo in terms of transportation characteristics and so on. Now, if you uh, go to the mayor's office or if you go to speak at the city press conference, these are the type of statistics that get thrown at you. Uh, and, and yes, they are valuable, but what, what do they mean? Well, the characteristics of Bowel is that we've got 400,000 daily trips that's in and out and are all around with this uh, CBD, secondary CBD. It's got a bigger taxi rank, a bit more trips happening here in Bowel than Cape Town. Hmm. Yeah, didn't know that. Uh, it's also then the most pedestrian traffic in Cape Town as well. Yeah, so so Balboa really does hold its weight in the city as an influence of transport and movement. Now, if we need to want to rethink this space, as some of the initiatives like the Great Tiger Book Partnership is trying to do, if we want to rethink the space, we have to understand it. And we have to understand mobility by mapping, which is what we did over the course of three months. Now, if you look at the split of transport in, in Balboa, Yes, public transport is used, but there is a king, and that is the private vehicle, the private car. We cannot get away from the fact that most people choose to use their vehicles, their private vehicles. They'll drive it into the CBD, they'll park it, and so for every 10 stories of, of office space, you've got to build a 12-story parking lot. When you sit at your desk, your car is taking up more space than you. So it's, a, it's an urban problem, and the, the disconnect between land use and transport is well documented internationally. There are actually cycle trips happening, that little line, there is a little line, 752 every day. The 752 brave souls get on bikes and try and cycle in Belleville. Bless their hearts. Now this is uh, the, the mode we focused on, the minibus taxi industry. Uh, we've already documented rail, uh, bus is, is this one centralized company with centralized management structures, very predictable. But when it came to the minibus taxi industry, very little literature, very little information, very little understanding. Yet it is probably the biggest contributor to the last mile journey. People generally will take a taxi to a train station, or they'll take a taxi to the bus terminus. Well, it, it fulfills that last mile, which we, uh, we don't want to walk, so we want to use. There are some limited access points where you can go to the taxi rank and ask, well, which one do I get into? Uh, which is probably what's stopping a lot of us from trying to use this, this, this system and staying in our cars. Or there's very informal gachis which uh, help people to uh, willingly or unwillingly get uh, boarded to go to Paro or, or up, uh, upstream. Very good accountants that make sure you pay. But it's a global problem, right? When you look at transport mapping and transport data, we had a, a delegation from New York that came, the university students, and they're like, yeah, but don't you guys have Google Transit? And the answer is we don't. So this is a map of transport ma of mapping around the globe, and you can see the green and the very dark green. The green is where you get a lot of spatial information and timetables, and, and you, you can download an app and you can use it. The very dark green is where it's, you know, usually Europe, where they want to see every single second your bus will arrive in 32 seconds. Exactly. If it doesn't run 32, I will apologize. But in Africa, in Asia, in some parts of Eastern Europe, South America, it's, it's unmapped. There is very, very little data available. So how do you solve that problem? If you want to have a smart city, you need to have a baseline data set. 
So we said, all right, we're up for the challenge. We built a little app called GoMap, a complementary app to GoMetro, which captures taxi and bus routes as you're driving along. And it allows you to hop into a taxi and contribute to your city's data set. So it allows everyone who has an Android or an iPhone to produce reliable, predictable, and usable data for machine learning, machine intelligence, and for automation to come. So this is where we are right now in terms of Africa's progressive technology stance in transportation. This is intelligent transport. This is uh, our version of the Internet of Things, an uh, app that uh, maps taxis and buses in South African cities and beyond. So, become a mapping hero. We're now rolling out a, a rewards program or incentive program, gamification, crowdsourcing, all that sort of stuff. But if you contribute one route or two routes that you often take, that's data we didn't have before you did that. So, we believe that people want an app that gives real-time information and transport on their phone and to, to be able to move across their city with freedom to choose beyond the private vehicle. And so it starts by contributing, by becoming a hero, to contribute to the transport mapping. Very simple process, you download the app, you start mapping, you hit a button every time the uh, taxi or bus stops, it routes, it tracks you all the way through, you, you can see your route, you upload it to the server, and then you can go, go and take a look at it. Well, what were the results? Uh, what was the outcome? Well, in November last year we started, and within 99 days we had mapped all transport that moves in and out of Bowser Terminus. That's 120 taxi routes, that's 160 bus routes, that's probably about five to 7,000 vehicles that we were able to capture uh, with a very, very small team. Yes, so transport can be fun. Changing that mindset away from the private vehicle means that we have to make public transport accessible, safe, reliable, and aspirational. The stat saddest statistic in South Africa is that when someone starts earning beyond three and a half thousand rand a month, the first purchase they make is a car. And you can imagine everybody purchasing vehicles, cars, that take up more space than they do. It means that we're defining our city and our space for the car, not the human. We want walkable cities, livable cities, we want cities we can enjoy, but we can't do that and have our love affair with the car. We have to give it up. So we have some trade-offs and sacrifices to make. We're working now with cities to incentivize that if, you are, if they have a smart car system, we can discount some of the trip. Maybe even ride for free if you're able to produce some of the data. And there's serious interest from, us for, from cities that are interested in incentivizing the use, the shift from private vehicle to public, public transport. So you can see our, our efforts, we put a team together and smart cities begin on paper and pen, unfortunately. Um, and documentation is, was, was absolutely key. And we had a team of four, a team of four that went out and did this data collection. The results of the efforts of these four brave people is full coverage of Cape Town, CBD and outlying areas. So there you see the proof. Within three months, we were able to capture and document all moving land transport in Cape Town. Buses, taxis, trains, anything that moves to a kind of a flexible schedule is in our system. The coverage, the granularity, there you see all the stops. So you, now you know where to go and stand, where to go and wait safely, hopefully. When you zoom in, you can see the granularity of operations. So there you see multiple data sets layered on top of each other. And what's interesting about this is the gross inefficiencies of the system. So one taxi is stopping in one point, but there's a different one stopping somewhere else. And there's a, just this plethora of, of, of stops everywhere. No bunching. No, that is not a transport system. That is chaos. So the efficiencies to the industry by having regular stops, regular points where they can actually get up to speed so that they're at an efficient fuel level, so that they're not burning fuel inefficiently, but they can get up to speed so that their tires get warm. The benefits to the organizations in terms of cost savings is enormous, and logistics is the next step with regards to making these efficiencies a reality. And for the public sector, we went very digital, and we produced a paper map of integrated transport, the first truly, I mean, we talk about integrated public transport in our cities. 
This is the first truly integrated public transport map because it includes the minibus taxi industry in the map. So you can, from Belleville now, figure out exactly where to go in Cape Town, where to take a taxi or a bus, and guess what? You won't get ripped off because we've, we've, we've measured, we've, we've figured out and, and measured exactly how much it will cost. So guess what? They won't see you coming. <laughs> So what's next? Well, what's next is that we're able to use this data to, to analyze uh, our cities much more smartly. This is a, a, route of, a picture of all the bus routes in um, and around Cape Town, um, and the major bus routes to, um, that you can access, overlaid with all the public healthcare facilities, the primary healthcare facilities. And there's one or two or three or four or twenty that have no reliable predictable service to get to. So we talked about distribution of medicine earlier and distribution of, of, of antiretrovirals. Well, how can we get this distribution right if we can't get the core fundamental transport system operating to the benefits of people and getting coverage to every single hospital? We couldn't because we didn't have the data mapped out. Now we do. We can also then look at every single point and see what is its accessibility score. How many routes are within 800 meters of a particular point? If I'm a developer, I should be held to account to ensure that if I develop something, I do have another option other than a private vehicle. I cannot just say, well, we will build a 5,000 bay parking bay. That is unacceptable for a livable, enjoyable, social city, having towers and towers of parking bays. Not a city I want to live in. So, where to from here? Well, the rest of Africa awaits, the rest of the emerging world awaits. And using the principle of crowdsourcing, as was explained earlier, we're able to tackle any chaotic, busy, bustling, bizarre, or transport terminus. And with a very simple app, GoMap, we're able to document and record transport very quickly, very efficiently, so that we can start layering uh, on logistical planning, efficiencies, scheduling efficiencies, gaps in, in, the, in city planning, transactions with mobile ticketing, and beyond, building the cities that we want, not the cities that we have, have been forced to accept. Thank you.